Hey guys, Troy here at the Pacific North Central. Uh, we're back for part three of the turnout build. And now I'm going to show you guys how to install the points in the wing, rail, the wing rails and be able to go ahead and build them. Um, you're going to use your, uh, your point form tool. Um, this actually uh, produces the points and the frogs on both sides so when you go to use this make sure that you're installing it the correct correct way all you're going to do is uh, take and slide your slide a couple pieces of rail up inside of there put one in on both sides and what you're going to do is you're going to be you know pay attention you're going to Go ahead and press on the base of the rail. I hope you guys can see this. It might be a little bit tough. What you're going to do is you're going to push down the base of this rail while squeezing the jig together. You don't really want to tighten it up because you need to be able to slide the rail in and out and be able to adjust the rail. What you're going to do is get it so the head of the rail is just on the inside of the uh, of the actual groove. So when you're looking at it nice and flat that section of the rail is, is sitting there nice and even. You can do the same thing with the other side. Get it right where you want it. And you're going to take it and make sure you're squeezing this the whole time. Double check the other one while you're pushing on it. Once you got it right where you want it, you want to take and tighten up your point and form tool. Give it a nice good snug. I'm going to take this right here and slide this right here aside and uh, grab a hold of the file here. And when you're using the uh, point form tool, always make sure that the rail is going away from you. You never want to go ahead and try to go up against the rail because then you're going to end up damaging the points when you're trying to build them. So what I do is always push. I cannot stress this enough. Always push that file. And you're going to go ahead and do this with both sides and actually be able to produce your points on both sides of it. Once you can get it down so far, the, uh, the file will actually get nice and easy where it, uh, you won't feel it grabbing so much as, it's, as it is filing on everything. Once it gets down there so far, go ahead and feel it. See how it feels. It's still not there. Go ahead and give it a few more swipes. As this is going to create the, the durability and the reliability of building your turnouts. Once you're done with that side, you'll take it, flip it on over. This has got to be one of the easier things about building the turnouts for, as far as filing and stuff is concerned, is doing the, uh, the points and the, and the frog. You can just take this. Go ahead and get it on down there. Once again, you'll you'll feel it. It'll uh, it'll get nice and smooth as that file right there comes across. And by pushing like this, you actually keep the same wear on this block. You know, I don't know that this block right here will necessarily wear down. However, if you look at the block, you can see all the scratches and the and everything coming off of there from the file. So if you're going the whole length of it, it's going to keep it nice and even. So even if the block is wearing down, you're still going to have a nice consistent point no matter how many points you end up using. I, I bet you a guy could probably go ahead and do a thousand turnouts with this one jig. And it would really pay for itself if he had a thousand turnouts built. Of course, I don't know anybody that's got that many turnouts on their layout. That just started slipping there a little bit. I think it needs just a little bit more on there. There we go. That feels pretty darn good. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and trim off these ends right here. Keeping them just a little bit long. You're not going to have any waste off of this because I'll show you the excess pieces here, what we do with those in the, uh, in the next video. So now you're just going to go ahead and take and pull out your points. 
Now you got your two points sitting there. And they're uh, they're all nice and clean. They're nice and flat. Coming down. Um, as a matter of fact, there's one of them burrs I was kind of telling you guys in video two, or yeah, video two I believe is what it was with the uh, the really fine pieces of, of shaving that actually comes up off of them. And what I do is I actually take my wire brush and I pull it this way. And I just all I want to do is just lightly go ahead and go over it, making sure that there's no fine little pieces. There's actually a piece sitting right here, and I don't know if you guys can see that or not. There we go, we got it to actually come off of there just a little bit. It's actually sitting right there, I think you guys might be able to see that right there, but that's the stuff that I'm talking about. And it's really fine. And if you don't get that stuff up off there, it's going to create a short circuit. It may not do it right away, but eventually it will. And to diagnose a short circuit like that, it's going to be really tough to try to find it. So you just want to go ahead and get that right there all nice and clean. Still some more burrs up on there. Go ahead and grab them. Just pull them off. Run your fingers going across. Shouldn't cut yourself on these at all. You want to do it kind of lightly though when you're when you're rubbing them. You don't want to do any damage. This is the end of these points, they are really thin. Okay. Once you have those right there done and ready, let me take it. Clean this right here off really quick from all these shavings. Try to go ahead and keep a nice clean work area. Now you're going to go ahead and grab your your jig with your turnout still sitting inside of there. And take and create your point rails. Your points and your wing rails actually. And there's a little notch. I don't know if you guys can see that. You can see this right here on this side. There's a little notch right there. You want to make sure you don't go past that notch. That's up and inside of there. So you'll take and you'll slide that right on up inside of there. And set that but your points down inside of it. And what I like to do is I like to go and keep this nice and straight where it's coming out at the other side of the rail. Then there's a little little mark down over here. On all these jigs, they all have a little mark on both sides right here for the wing rails. And that's right where you're gonna go ahead and take and and put a little mark up on there and uh, you're actually going to take that triangular file and cut that section right there out and all you're going to do is go ahead and take away the base of the of the rail and what that's going to allow you to do is go ahead and create a bend so let's go ahead and do this one first so I got that mark sitting there I'm going to take the file and go ahead and file this piece right here down. I'm going to double check this here just to make sure I got it right where I want it. Double checking my mark right where I want to put the file on the mark because even though you have a fine uh, sharpie you can still not go ahead and get quite as accurate so I want to kind of pay attention to the mark. All you're going to do is you're just going to take away the base of the rail you know, hold it at an angle and take out the base of it. This one right here you can kind of go back and forth with. I like to go right up next to the rail on this cut. Let's see if you guys can see this. There's actually a nice little groove on the flange of that rail right there. And all you're going to do then is you're going to take the rail and you're going to put your finger. I like to stick my finger right inside that. Get that fingernail right up in there. And just go ahead and give it a little bit of a bend. Now you got a nice sharp bend and it's nice and clean. This right here is going to produce that, that uh, wing rail right there that goes up there inside the frog. And you want this right here to try to match up with the actual wing rail, like that's sitting right up over here on this on this side. You want it to be able to line up inside that groove as close as possible. Because <clears throat> once again, you don't want no pressure up in there. All that pressure is just going to create some problems in the future. And this is just going to make for a nice, reliable turnout. Something that you're not going to have to go ahead and work on again later. So once you got that mark down inside of there, you'll take note of right where the actual wing rail ends. 
like on this side, this side of the jig right here, you'll see right where it actually slides down inside of there. You actually take your cutters, your your uh, your nip, your rail nippers, and actually go ahead and get it kind of marked out. And what I do is I just get it marked. I'll take it back up out of the jig, get it marked on the side of there, and then snip it off. Then what I'll do is I actually go ahead and take another file. I'll file down the end of the rail. There's a little piece of detail right here that I like to go ahead and try to pay attention to because if you're running a video camera or anything else like that coming down your layout, you want the ends of that right there to look really nice. And any time that you take a photograph of something like that, it, it's going to be something that even after it's painted, you're going to end up seeing that right where them rail nippers right there were. I do this for all my track as it looks a little bit better and everything else. It's just something I like to do, and it'll look good in the long run. That doesn't look too bad. Now that I got the end of the rail nice and clean the way I like it, then I go ahead and I take the, rail, the wing rail, and I'll flip it to the outside edge. So you notice the frog and the wheel sets will actually come up and right in between this rail and the frog. So now you're going to go ahead and create a little bit of a, a beveled edge up on there. What I like to do is I like to go ahead and go half, about halfway through the actual rail head. And, and, and not even the rail head, but the, the, the center part of the actual I-beam of the rail. And you're going to put this in there at an angle so you're not filing it straight. And what this, is, what this little section right here is going to do is it's going to go ahead and grab a hold of them back flanges on the... Uh, on the wheel sets and actually suck that wheel set up into the turnout. If you don't do this, the back flanges can actually go ahead and catch at the tip of the wing rail right there and go ahead and create a derailment. The cars will actually stop if they happen to catch. Um, so that's that's something that this is actually a must to go ahead and do. And make sure you guys get that because once you get that frog put up in there, you get these wing rails. Uh, uh, solder down inside of there. It, it tends to be a little bit more difficult to try to go and get that there cleaned up now I'm going to go ahead and dry fit this See how nicely this right here fits Down inside the actual jig and that fits down in there pretty good. It's not too bad. I can I can live with that a little bit a uh, little bit of pressure right there, but I think she'll she'll end up going down inside there pretty nicely now I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. However, the other side is going to be a little bit different now. Because here we're going to go ahead and get the diverging route. And get this angle down through here. That bend actually occurs from this point to this point right here. So this is the bend you actually need to create. It's not the actual points that right where you need to go ahead and create it at. So what I'll do is I'll actually go ahead and get this right where I want it. I'll get my fingers up over there right where that bend is supposed to be. Now I'll work my way backwards from the points. Just slowly go ahead and get that bend through there. You want it to be nice and even. It's kind of like working with ribbon. Um, if you guys ever wrap Christmas presents and you take that ribbon and you stick it down and on a pair of scissors between your fingers and you pull them scissors down the edge of the ribbon and it makes it nice and curly. You're basically doing the exact same thing here on this. Then you're going to go ahead and dry fit it. See how nicely it sits up inside of here, if it even fits. Paying attention to how far down it sits up against the jig right here with the ends of right where that guard rail right there sits. And that doesn't fit down inside there too bad. I think I can live with that. Now you're going to go ahead and mark this one on the other side. So you're going to take your Sharpie while you're holding it in there. And once again, you, that little mark right there wherever the, ring rail, uh, the wing rail sits, you take your Sharpie and you're going to put a little mark down inside of there. Taking note that with your Sharpie, like I said, it's not going to be accurate, so you want to take a visual of it. Kind of note right where that section right there is sitting. So when you take your file, you can actually go ahead and mark that right there out with the file cutting down on the base but same thing as the other wing rail or same thing as the other wing rail 
This is one that I just go back and forth on, making sure I get it all the way down to the base of the rail. I don't think you need to go down that far necessarily, but uh, it does create a nice, crisp, clean bend in there. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and make that bend. It's going to go ahead and create that other wing rail with the points. I'm going to go ahead and stick that down inside of there. This one here I kind of bent a little bit too much. So we'll just go ahead and straighten that out. It's no big deal. Dry fit it again. I'll keep bending it the way it needs to be. Well, that's not sitting in there too bad. I think I can live with this. It's sitting the way I, the way I really want it to go ahead and sit up in there. Double checking the end of it. Sliding it down right where I want it to sit. And it still fits in there nice and tight with a nice crisp bend. I'm going to take my rail nippers. Doing the same thing as what we did over there the other side. Or we're just going to go ahead and get our actual mark down onto it. Once I got it kind of marked out, I'll pull it back out. Trim off this little bit of an end. <coughs> Then doing the same thing as we did on the other one, I'll take and clean up the end of the, the rail head so it's nice and clean. Once so again, you guys probably don't have to do this, but it's something I like to do. Just a little extra detail. You're going to do the same thing again. You're going to take your file and go ahead and file down the end. Got to be able to go ahead and make sure that the back plan just be able to go ahead and catch up inside of there. This is what's going to help your train from derailing. It's going to suck it up inside that frog and keep it from uh, doing any other doing any uh, derailing coming through that frog. And if you look at the real world rail, uh, turnouts and stuff and all these railroads and stuff, they're actually cut down the same way too. These are designed with a purpose. If you watch a train actually go through, you can actually watch the truck shift and get sucked up into that actual frog. So if you guys ever get a chance, and even up there on YouTube or, or other videos and stuff, or even just go out there to a rail yard and watch them do some switching and watch them trucks go ahead and go up there through a frog, you can actually see how them trucks actually roll through there. Now we got that fitting up in there. That right there is looking pretty darn good. Now we'll go ahead and we'll stick in the other one here as well. If I can go and get it to stay. Sometimes you have to do them one at a time. Sometimes you can go ahead and install both of them at the same time. Be able to hold them down there and be able to solder up both sides at the exact same time. Which kind of saves a little bit of time. Now what I do is I actually apply my flux on the wing rails. These are the only points right here right where you're actually going to go ahead and solder. Do it on the outside two edges right here. Put a little bit of flux there. Some flux on this one. Going, paying attention I'm going to the outside edges of the of the actual rail. Some more flux up on here. I don't want too much. I just want to just barely get anything up on there. I'm going to go up to the wing rails. I'm not going to do the wing rails quite yet. This is basically just going to go ahead and get everything to sit up in there nice and tight. Take out some saw, my cut up pieces of solder. Place all the solder up on there. We're going to try this and see if we can do both sides here at the same time. As I always try to, it just doesn't always work. Some are different than others. You go ahead and try to build them. Make sure you got a nice clean tip on your soldering iron. And you're going to do the same thing as what you did with the stock rails. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that that solder gets up over there onto the base of the rail because that's what's going to hold it. 
And on these ones, what I like to do is I like to hold it down there for just a second just so I can heat up the rail and the PCB tie. What that's going to do is it's going to allow the solder to soak underneath everything. Once I can see a bubbling on the other side of the rail there just a little bit, that's when I know I'm, I'm good to go. I'm going to do the same thing over here on this side. I'll hold it down nice and tight, making sure it's up tight up against the PCB ties. Making sure I heat up the base of the rail just until that solder comes all the way through there. And all it takes is just a little bit on those. There we go. That's good to go. <coughs> Now I'm going to actually go ahead and do up the uh, the next piece right here on the wing rails. Oh, it's a little too much there. That's okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and use my little scribe tool here. We'll start off with this side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to push down on the rail just back in the PCB tie so I'm not soaking up all the heat. And what we're going to do is we're going to push it to the outside edge of the jig, keeping it away from the tip of the frog, the actual frog. I'm going to use my hand to actually hold on onto the base of the jig with one side of my hand while pushing down onto the rail, and making sure it's down and over to the, out, to the outside edge of it there onto the jig. Place the solder up on there, making sure we do the same thing again. These right here take a little bit more because you're putting quite a bit of pressure up on there for them to heat up to go and get that solder to draw through there. Once you see it there, let it cool down and go ahead and go on off to the other side. Grab another piece of solder, get that one up on there. Once again, we're going to do the same thing. Now this one doesn't sit up there as tight, so i got to put quite a bit of pressure on this one. A lot more than what I had to on the other one there. We're going to do the same thing with this one. Getting that solder to just barely come through there. You don't need a whole lot, just a little bit. You have to go ahead and be able to hold it down. Let it cool. And go ahead and remove. Now you got your points installed and your your wing rails on the turnout. Now you're about three quarters of the way done on a turnout. Um, next video here, I will go ahead and teach you guys how to install the uh, the frog and the guardrails onto the turnout as I like to do the guardrails at the last point in case if I had to do any adjustments with the ring rails which that sometimes happens um, so I hope you guys like the video um, with the uh, installation of the uh, the wing rails and the, uh, the points if you guys have any questions comments uh, feel free to let me know and uh, stay tuned for the uh, for video 3 and uh, We'll go ahead and get that frog put up in there and we'll be on our way to a well used and reliable turnout. Thanks again for watching you guys. Thanks for subscribing. And uh, you guys have a good day. Thanks again.